Hey Mario, what's up? Welcome. Um, let's get a few people in here. Mr. McCook, welcome, sir. Um, share the link, folks. Share the link. Let people know we're here. I'm gonna cover the goat dairy development initiative that the Jamaica Development the Jamaica Deer Development Board is uh, is initiating. Uh, so I'm going to talk about it. Some of the main points, some of the takeaways from that amazing uh, meeting that we had. So I think anybody who's thinking about goat dairy should feel a little excited that. Um, the deer board is actually looking at this and trying to figure out a way to have goat dairy as part of their overall um, dairy volume, if that makes sense. So if you guys can, you know, share and invite people to be a part of this discussion, because I got um, some interesting um, things from the meeting to share with you guys and I got the full uh, cooperation of the Deer Board CEO and the president of the association that I can share some of this uh, information with with you guys so it should be good um, welcome everybody uh, thanks for being here and share with, uh, with with everybody you know share on the groups that you belong to WhatsApp group, Facebook group, all of them. So if you think somebody's interested in this, and there's other little things that was part of the meeting, uh, even on the association side, the association has some good news coming down the pipeline in the form of assistance. So it's uh, it was overall a positive meeting. Um, I will uh, get into it. Let's, let's see if we can get to 15 people or 20 people. Let's go to 20 people, and then I start this. If we guys can get, get us to 20 people, I can we, let's start this and keep it moving. Um, the more revenue stream we have from an operation, then the better it is for us. Um... Linda, what's going on, Linda? Uh, one second, I'm trying to adjust my screen so I can see the notes from the meeting while I'm talking to everybody. Howard, what's up? Big up. Um, Leona, welcome, Leona. Leona from the which island is again? Truly help me out, huh? Yeah, Virgin British Virgin Islands. See, I'll get it sooner or later. I'll be automatic, Leona. Don't feel bad. Kenneth, big up. Kenneth, the puppy is doing well, by the way. Give Trudy and Auntie B a workout this evening. Frederick, big up. All right, so folks, this past week, I think it was Wednesday, Wednesday, I'm sure Wednesday, I was invited to a, what I would call an exploratory meeting with the Jamaica Development Dairy Board, Jamaica Dairy Development Board, um, 
one second. Um, so where I was, I got a letter from Mr. Trevor Bernard from the association about this meeting and we were invited by Mr. Bernard. Um, the attendees were Mr. Bernard um, from the association, president of the association. He, had, he also invited uh, Tika Smith from St. Elizabeth, Dr. Young, um, Byron from Rudy Goat Dairy, and the great, great Mr. Farron were the guests in attendance. From the J JDDB were the CEO, Mr. Parks, and um, Paul Sayers. So it was um, just a small group, um, focus group to explore what are the possible angles or routes we could take to help develop goat dairy in Jamaica. Um, off the top, I must say, you know, we were we were told, and the, Mr. Parks, the CEO, gave us a quick um, update on where they are with uh, the, helping the association with uh, some asks and things that Mr. Bernard been working on for a while to help the association. And one of those things is uh, helping them with ha having a field officer and a clerical uh, staff, somebody to help, you know, answer phone and address uh, farmers' uh, questions, however, and I think some funds to help with transportation, upkeep, meeting expenses, office expenses, that type of stuff. So I think um, Mr. Bernard can speak more on that as the president, but I just wanted to let you guys know that that's a, a positive from the JDDB that's coming towards the association. And I, I think it's something that Mr. Bernard has been working on for a while. Um, so that's one. Um, the, 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 the JDDB in association with the, the with us in cooperation with the association or in association with the association, um, they're looking into securing um, semen and, and rolling that out. I think that's part of what the, the, the minister spoke about in his presentation. And they're also looking into fodder conservation, um, which is also part of what the minister spoke about. Um, there's lands, government land that uh, other stakeholders have long lease on and they're going to approach them to go into fodder conservation, whether planting hay or whatever it is to help with the feed security. So th those are the things that were addressed off the top, right? Um, I think the meeting was very positive. It was a very good meeting. And when it comes to the dairy stuff, there were some uh, different topics that we jumped into. Um, and mainly what are the things that we should make priority in creating a pathway to, to, the develop, to developing the goat dairy. One is like housing, equipment, technical support, marketing, agro-processing, you know, storage, training to farmers to understand how to milk properly and all that stuff. So the that was the framework. Those topics is the, are the framework which we had the discussion on. It. You know, what I mean, discussion on housing, discussion on equipment, discussion on technical support. You know, marketing got a, took a lot of time, a lot of discussion on marketing because, you know, we all believe that once we market and educate people, we can develop a stronger market for for goat milk products or goat milk itself, right? Um, the, one of the great assets we had at the meeting was Mr. Farron, who gave us a real good history on Jamaica dairy, whether it's uh, cattle or 
goat. I didn't even realize that Jamaica had a a, a fledging goat berry um, cis production thing going on at uh, Hounslow. Yeah, and you know, he told us a story of how that got uh, sideways because of transportation or whatever. But um, he has a lot of information. He has a lot of documents, research documents, and um, and he's willing to share and be a part of this uh, discussion on on how to to develop goat dairy. Um, as far as I'll touch on some other things, housing one is a big deal because you know. You have to have somewhere where you can, like a milking pot, where there's a small room that you take the animal to, or a small space separate from everything else, all the other animals to, to milk. You know, milking equipment. If you're gonna really start milking, then you're gonna you don't wanna really do it by hand. If you if it's just you, and you have five or ten goats or whatever to milk, then it will take up a lot of time, and we think that efficiency is more important. You know, so equipment, what equipment will be needed, those are some of the discussions we had, and how, you know, government entities can help with that. You know, whether it's uh, concessions or importation of these, these equipment and available to farmers, a cost or... Whatever it is, whatever it's worked out to be, that we'll, the discussion was about the different equipment that would be needed and how to get access to it. Now, technical support, um, they we talked about getting people in in the, the, the field to teach farmers how to raise dairy goats, whether it's the nutrition that's needed because a whole different nutritional um, requirement for dairy goats. You can't treat it like a regular meat goat or whatever. And also the harvesting of the milk. You know, um, I know here on a Carver Ranch, we, we started almost two months now that we start milking. And it's a process from sanitation to, you know, milking the goats to what um, dividing up the milk and storing the milk, um, filtering the milk, it's a process. And it's and every step of that process, um, it's very important that we pay attention to sanitation, cleanliness, um, limit uh, contamination or ex try to exclude contamination, period. Nothing can be contaminated or else that milk's no good for human consumption. So that's the number one thing is technical support and training. You know, it's important that we get that right. Um, now, for me, you know, marketing to me was the number one thing because I really don't care how much product you have, how much milk you have. If you sit there and spoil, if you don't create a market, you know, if you don't let people know the benefits of goat milk and the health benefits or how much better the cheese taste or whatever you're, you're, you're marketing, whatever your brand is marketing, you have to let people know about it, let people know how good it is, you know, let people taste it, you know, and for as far as I'm concerned, I just let my opinion know that the, the dairy board has to do their PSAs in their in their marketing budget. They have to let people know goat dairy is good. It's good for if you're lactose intolerance, try goat milk. That type of stuff. When I, I I'm not expecting the dairy board or any government entity to be advertising mm -hmm. will be goat will be goat dairy product or carburized product or trim jam product, but. I'm expecting them to put um, knowledge in the marketplace on goat milk as a dairy board to say, yo, goat milk is good. Goat milk is, you know, help with people who are, who are lactose intolerant. You know what I mean? 
the pH balance of goat milk is better than any other milk. None of them can say that, but I would love for them to say that, you know, because it is true, it's factual, you know, and um, and then you can develop a market from there. You know, you can actually, once people realize, what's the word, get out, that this is good, you can actually start doing taste tests or taste uh, things in supermarkets or at the the farmer's market, that type of stuff to get people on it, you know, tastemakers, you know, chefs, get chefs to use the cheese and talk about it, go up on TVJ, CVM, whatever it is, and do a little thing in the morning for, with some goat cheese or whatever it is, you know what I mean, just get goat cheese on people's mind, you know, and we can develop a market. You know, now the agro-processing part, you know, I think not everybody has to be a goat milk farmer. Some people can be on the processing side where they just get the milk and make the goat milk products, you know. So that's that's a discussion we had, you know. Um, Ruby, dairy goats, they want to do a lot more processing than developing a, goat, a dairy goat herd. You know, they would like to be more on the processing side and then have a cluster of farmers around them that supply them with the milk, you know, because obviously for space and thing, they don't have that kind of space to have a hundred goats or stuff, but they can develop their processing facility to take a lot more milk if they have clusters of farmers around them, you know, selling them the milk. But um, to each his own, you know, if you only have 10 goats, but you want to dip your toe into the goat milk stuff, then you can make lotion, soap. Those things have long shelf lives. So it's not about like if you have to get rid of it right away, it's going to spoil. You know, soap and them things not going to spoil in anytime soon. So then you can start making different, different soap experiments, sell it at the, the market, um, the farmer's market or wherever or put get Fantana for the Alico space or whoever and start marketing it online. You know, you know, the I we discovered that the, the post office of as, as amazing uh, mailing service delivery service across the island, which is like a, a day or two delivery, which is affordable. So people can start utilizing that. You know, um so, yeah, the meeting was, those are the things. You know, training, I think, is another big one. Um, just, well, let me, before I go to training, storage of the milk. Let me explain something about storage of the milk. I never, you guys ever seen that video we put out where we had to load a whole freezer onto the, the, the truck to deliver the milk because that was the first week of us milking. And we didn't realize how much milk we we're going to have. And then we didn't have igloos and all them things to transport the milk to, to where it needs to go. And we had to just lift the freezer and put it in a pickup and drive it, the whole freezer, to the, the, the customer because we didn't know, we didn't have anything else. So now we know the proper way how to store the milk in the freezer you know, in containers that can fit in the eagles and all that stuff. Then storage of the milk from harvesting to 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 cooling to cooling it in a freezer or a fridge. It's very important. That's why training, having the right people come in and train people is so paramount, you know. Okay, you can't start off on the wrong foot. And Dr. Young was a big, big um like what do you call what's the word when you just like adamant that you cannot you cannot compromise you can't uh, you can't compromise that part you cannot it only takes one incident for the whole industry to go down if one person say yo got seriously ill from goat milk that was you know on the market endorsed by XYZ, Jamaica Dairy Board, talk about it or whatever, and then people got sick from it. That's all it takes, and then nobody want to try it again. 
you know, because people don't want to understand what caused it, you know, they just want to know it, it happened and they don't want it to happen again. So, the training of how to harvest, how to store, all that stuff is paramount. And that's where a lot of the focus will be in creating the, um, the roadmap moving forward. Now, we created in the meeting, we designated people in the meeting for to as the subcommittee that they will be the point people on creating this roadmap, which is Dr. Young, um, Mr. Farron, and um, and will be good. Will be very good for them. They're more. Ex they have a lot more experience. You know, Dr. Young has milk on the market. Um, Ruby, dear goat, have products on the market. So we have the right people to actually <clears throat> have this discussion and map out the way forward. So the reason I'm telling you guys all this is because I want people to feel excited that this is moving in the right direction. You know, the people who are actually active in the space, who has products in the, in the uh, on the shelves, are the people who are involved in <clears throat> trying to figure this out. So I want people to feel like this is something that we should be excited about. We should be patient. That's number one, because nothing happens overnight. And start your own way. Like, you know, we call it, I call it YouTube University. Start gaining your own knowledge. The best way to go about doing things, you know, start setting yourself up. That's when, that when, um, when things start moving, you are ready to go. You're ready to be a part of it. Another big thing they're doing, and it's in the early stages and the drafting stages, is to officially make Goat Dairy a part of the Dairy Act in Jamaica. Right now, it's just um, the bylaw only includes um, cows, you know, cattle. It doesn't include goats. So now the Jamaica Development Dairy Board is trying to get Go dairy as part of that bylaw, which means any bylaw, anything that comes down for the cattle dairy stuff automatically, you know, benefits goat dairy. You know, when it comes to rights and and um, shelf space or market space and all them things, you we were included. Goat dairy will be included in that. You know, um, let me see here. See if some of my notes that I took. Um, yeah, and um, Mr. Farron, which is, you know, an encyclopedia. Like that man, I'm telling you folks, people need to start giving that man them flowers from no, because when it comes to livestock, especially goat and thing, Mr. Farron is unbelievable the amount of information they have. You know what I mean? And he made it clear to us that, look, you, can't, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Barbados and Trinidad has a goat dairy program that's working. So we can invite people from there to come and give us pointers, which is amazing. You know, they, they can come over and say, hey, to avoid certain mistakes, we tried, we did this, we did that, it didn't work until we did this and it worked. You know, so it's good that our neighbors have something going. And it's something that we can actually get them involved in and help us develop this. You know, yes, King, yes, Khalil, Miss, Mr. Farron is the man. Like the man is like, is unbelievable the knowledge he has about the history of Jamaica livestock and good thing. And the documentation that he keeps, you know what I mean? He, he, he has everything. Anything you want to know about Jamaica, go thing, just ask Mr. Ferran. He'll tell you. You know, he'll tell you how to get the information to. Um, and yes, uh, it, you know, Dallas says goat milk is good for the skin. Goat milk soap, yeah. Actually, I use goat milk soap today. I've right? been using goat milk soap for uh, so much months. <laughs> and yeah, let's see if I look cool on camera. 
Yeah, not bad. Goat milk soap. And goat milk soap and lotion. That's all I've been using for months. Um, because if you have the milk and have the products, you might as well use them. Instead of go buy um, fancy soap of a, a supermarket. All right. <laughs> Peter laugh. <laughs> yeah, Peter, you know how it go. Um, yeah, and that's basically the meeting in a nutshell. You know, people's conversation and them things, I can't, you know, tell you guys, but the, the whole meeting was positive. Everything about the meeting, to me, was positive. All the players um, that were involved, or it was all positive, you know what I mean? Um, I must give kudos to Mr. Parks, the CEO, and um, the association, Mr. Bernard, He, I got the invitation from him. So, you know, big respect for that. And everybody should, if you're interested, if you think good beer is, is a part of your long-term plan with your goat operation, stay tuned and prepare yourself to be a part of this, this uh, initiative. You know what I mean? Because numbers, you no, know, we're going to need the numbers. We're going to need people involved. You know what I mean? We're going to definitely be needing more producers. And I, I, one thing um, Mr. Ferran joked about is that them breed out the, the, the dairy out of the Nubia and them and, and, and just breed in the, the Roman and the show good thing to the Nubians there in Jamaica. But um, with the with the new, with the, with the semen initiative that Minister Floyd is bringing in, I think we sh the, the, the dairy people them should put some, you know, more emphasis on adding dairy, dairy uh, genetics to their program. You know what I mean? For sure, you should. People should. Like, you know what I mean? Don't be, if you're like me, who don't care about going to Denby? For sure, it's a milk. Like you know, everybody know by should know by now that Cabra Ranch only started because Judy is obsessed with good milk products. You know, that's the only reason I'm sitting here talking to you folks because of, what is it called? Eleven Eleven Spa. Mm -hmm. Eleven Eleven Spa goat milk products. That's what the the brand is. Um, I don't even know if we have any product in the store. In the online store, there's no product in there? No. Because you got stuck here? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we can sell it here in Jamaica, I know. Yeah. Um, Renee says she would love to be love to be a goat farmer. Okay, Renee. Um, buy two goats. And keep them for a year. And then let us know if you still want to be a goat farmer. I'm just kidding, by the way, because if you're serious, you don't need it a year. You just like go do your own research, go hang out at a farm. Oh, this is number one thing you should do, Renee. Go on a farm, a goat farm, and do spend the whole day helping them and doing things, and do it when they have kids, when there's young kids on, at the farm. And then you can figure out if you like good farming or not from just that one day. You know what I mean? Find a farm you like, somebody you get along with or you admire, and do that. And then you find out if you want to be a good farm. Um, uh, Chili Anthony says that. Um, let me hold. Let me see what what I'm saying. Oh, it's great diversity for the production. Yeah, it is. You know, multiple revenue stream. Um, Rene, just be patient. You don't have to have um, purebred animals. You know, you can find good milk producing graded animals and work your way up. Because when they look at it this way, you don't get all these great purebred females that are giving you a whole of milk and then what you do with the milk. You know what I'm saying? So you got to creep before you walk 
So my grandmother told me, anything she says facts. Just saying. Um, yeah, Darren. Yeah, come through during kidding season, man, when kids are dropping, and then you find out if you love it or not. That will test everything, your ambition, your, your patience, you know, your stress level. Yeah. Um, so definitely that's what you should do, Renee. Just go volunteer a day at a farm that you like and see how much you enjoy that process. Um, any questions, folks? Any questions you have on that? Before I touch into some other things about me this week. Okay. Um, so Khalil has a question for, for, for me, for us, because I'm here alone. Um, but tell us more about your entrance into goat dairy. Okay, so here's what happened. We truly making these products, which she just bought the goat milk from the supermarket in fire. And she's making these products, selling them to friends and family and all that stuff. Well, first of all, she was giving half of it away. And then what people say, no, I'll buy it. Then she decided to sell it. But we were using those lotions and stuff all the time, you know what I mean? Walking, all that, going into the elevator, people are like, why you get, why you smell so sweet? All that stuff. It was crazy. Um, and it's always the lotion. The lotion was, lotion is amazing. And then she came to Jamaica and see people goats on the streets and she's like, she come back, oh, there's lots of goats on the street and I'm just going to grab them and keep them and start a farm. Like, you can't do that. There are people goats. No, they're not people goats. They're just walking the street. I'm like, they belong to people. Okay, <laughs> let's get past that. But then I was like, okay, all right, fine. You you want to do this, then we got to do it right. And that's how Cabra Ranch was born. Um, first challenge was getting animals, goats. You know what I mean? Terrence Johnson blessed us with to purchase seven goats from them. And initially we said, okay, do we gonna get, we couldn't get um, purebred and everything there because the money we had to spend, we'd only be able to buy two goats or three goats if we were buying full blood or purebred. So we consulted with all these people, consulted with, you know, Dr. Young, Khalil, um, the, when it was at the time, it was a sheep and goat association and then people. Eh? And so people said, oh, start with graded. So then we got in, we went and got graded, seven graded from, from TJ. We didn't jump into the milk thing because we were advised that once you start milking, you have to just keep going. You can't just turn off the tap. You know, you can't turn off the tap and then come back and turn it on. It has to be a constant, a consistent thing. So that we say, okay, we'll start with the meat stuff and then get figure out how to care for the animals, how to, to, to feed them, how to deal with kidding and all that stuff. And officially, we started officially 2019. And so the biggest challenge was acquiring animals and learning the process of taking care of the goats. Now, when we get to this year and decide that, okay, pushed by Ruby dairy goats to say, okay, good guys, just like to start milking. We say, okay, they come on, they give us a quick crash course training on the sanitation and and how to harvest the milk and all the necessary precautions we need to take, the storage system, all that. We all got our food handlers permit from the government and we start milking. Well, the number one thing was we weren't getting the volume we thought we would because we weren't feeding the way we should for the dairy goats, the goats that we were actually milking. Once we made the switch and start ramping that up, here comes the milk. 
And trust me, we don't have dairy goats. We just have goats that give a good amount of milk. So imagine when we actually have some real dairy goats. We have like four Nubians, three Nubians that we're milking, and they're not in the milking thing all the time. Only one is in the milking group right now. Yeah, two of them in the milking group right now. So once we get, we're in the early stage, we're going to be milking for two months. So once we get the knack of this and figure out how to ramp up the milking and the animals, I have the data of the animals that give us good milk. So now when we start inserting the genetics, milk genetics into these this herd and start getting the offsprings and think, trust me, it's gonna be on. You know, we're gonna get we're gonna have a lot of milk. I don't know what Trudy's gonna do with all that milk, but yeah, we're gonna have a lot of milk. And we're looking forward to it because I think, you know, finally we're gonna be doing what we came here to do, what the calling was. Even right now, we're in that that mode. We're seeing it. You know, we we see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, and we're excited about it. No, it was not a cow, Howard. We were not milking a cow. I don't know where you get that from. We were not milking a cow. Well, the goat may look like a cow. Goat was big. I don't know which one was that, Judy. The one that the that big goat. Yeah, but um, the goat's big. Yeah, and you know, funny thing, they see these people around here don't have the things I observe. It. I realized that once since we've been milking some of these goats, their order seems bigger. Doctor Young, can you give me a thumbs up or a fire up on that? Their order seems bigger since we've been milking them. And I think it's just going to get better. They're going to produce more milk the more we milk. Like even this, this group, once we dry them off and they come back around the second time in the program, they definitely going to have more milk because some of them, their orders just explode. See, Dr. Young said, yes, it's true. It's the feed. Who says it's the feed? I don't know if it's the feed. I think it's the process of milking. I think it's the process of massaging the udder and all that stuff that's just make it bigger. You know what I mean? I don't know. Does it work for women? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> you know, we don't have no kids out here, right? I don't want to be saying anything to offend anybody. Oh, yeah, that goat gives us a lot of milk. Um, thanks, Dr. Young. Dr. Young says thanks for congratulating us on actually starting this program. Yeah, um, you know, the thing about it now is we have to really structure this. We have to make sure that milking is happening every day. So what that means is we have to figure out the cost of having somebody do the milking so then we can, you know, go down on the, down the riverside or down on the beach one and two times. We can't, we can't let that, the milking, you know, have us stuck on the farm every day. So, because it's not something you can pause, you know. Um, so we're going to work that out. And I think Judy has a great handle on that. Um, but for sure, the milking thing is exciting. It's happening. You know, we, we, we're hoping that we, we developed a, a group breeding thing. So we're hoping that with this group breeding, we're able to put animal in the milk program, take animals out of the milk program without having a drop off in the production of milk that we do, the yield from from the group, from the group, and it's up to Trudy to tell me um, what the group are doing. Where is it? Ten goats in the, each group in the group. You know what the group is doing when it comes to the yield we're getting, and how we can either add animals to it or let it be what it is based on 
uh, consumption of the milk, usage of the milk. Yeah. Um, so once she sees where it's drop off and what we can put in, which animal we can put in there to make up for that drop off and take out the, the ones that are not giving us enough milk. And we're, our plan is to, is to um, dry them off at three months of pregnancy because we're not holding up our breeding because of the milk. I don't know if that's possible. Dr. Young, you tell me if that's possible from my little research. So, you know, I'm always digging into other people's business to find out how they do it. Um, it's like if you can breed them and then dry them off at three months pregnancy so they can get ready for the, the, the kidding two months later. And I'm hoping that I can implement that kind of system here and just always have a group of milking animals. Rotate them in and out and still keep our, our breeding program going. So Dr. Young, tell me if that works or not. You know, yeah, we're gonna be getting, we're gonna look into a machine, a, a milking machine, very shortly. Yeah, um, we're gonna look into a milking machine. See, Dr. Young says um, lactation can reduce fertility. Okay, we're gonna find out pretty soon because we had like what. Five goats in that milking group that that was serviced. So about next month we're gonna do pregnancy tests and see if they're pregnant or not. If they're not, then we may have to take them out of the group. Which one? Which one's more important? Should they take them out of the group or keep milking them? Oh. <laughs> it's not gonna work for me. You know what I mean? It's not going to work for me. I got a long list of people asking for female kids. I can't get keep female kids with all these mothers to stay milk, milking. You know, and I can't grow our herd to 200 females if, um, if uh, they're all just there milking all the time. Yeah, but if you tell me we're making millions of dollars of the milking, of course they can just keep milking. I don't care. <laughs> Happy medium. Happy medium. Yeah, I think. Okay, guys, you guys tell me. Give me a fire emoji or something, thumbs up or something if you think 100 uh, milking females, 100 meat production females. What do you guys think? Is that a good split? Because we're saying comfortably we can do 200 females. You guys tell me, what do you think? Should we split it 50, 100, 100 milking animals, 100 um, graded boar or boar slash whatever? <laughs> Dr. Young said you better have the market for, for, for milk good. But Dr. Young, we're acting positive. We are going to create the market. We are definitely going to create the market. Whether it's, you know, milk in the store, like milk that you drink in the store, or gelato, or lotion, or soap, or cottage cheese, cheddar cheese. Uh, what other cheese, Judy? Uh, mozzarella. mozzarella cheese. You know what I mean? Hmm? Ricotta cheese, like the list goes on and on. I think it just comes down to us marketing it and doing, you know, food tests, get some chef to cook up some things with these cheese and these things and just say, yo, go on TVJ. You know what I mean? Everybody involved can just do their part and develop the market. You know what I mean? Get a celebrity chef. You know, a celebrity chef will willing to use some things and say, yo, the goat milk thing tastes better with the, with the taste of food tastes better with goat milk than it tastes with cow's milk. You know what I mean? So I'm just saying, you know what I mean? I'm excited. You guys can tell that I'm fired up about this.
She's as excited as it gets for me. I'm, I'm not going to be more animated about nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and the thing is, some of the some of the products, I know that thing is highly engaged in this. Some of the products don't have short shelf lives. Some of these value added products. So those are the things that you can put some muscle behind when it comes to marketing and because it's not gonna spoil right away, you know. So you can just take your time and develop it. Nothing's gonna happen overnight. But think about five years from now. You know what I mean? If you let's say you create an amazing brand, Jamaica is kind of iffy on the goat milk thing. But somewhere like Trinidad already have a taste feed. Then we have a CARICOM thing where you can ship back and ship for free to Trinidad, right, Julie? I don't know. You know? But I think somebody said that. I don't think it's either the minister or somebody said that. Then we can start shipping it to Trinidad. You know what I mean? We can supply Trinidad with goat milk products because they have a taste feet already. That's how I feel. You know what I mean? Jamaica may take longer, but it doesn't mean that we can't ship the stuff to Trinidad or Barbados or whoever else have it, or Haiti or somewhere. Yeah. The U.S., you know what I mean? You know, I see goat milk. I mean, I don't know if the dairy thing in the U.S. is tighter, right? They won't, I don't know if they'll take stuff outside the country, but, but all I'm saying is I see a way forward. I see how we can make this happen. Yeah. Who is Dan Lee? And why we think we care about him bicycle? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Canada and the U.S. I think has some really tight dairy product importation rules. But I think they were actually having a fight over that in their last trade agreement. But I so I don't know what their rules are in importation. But for the Caribbean, I know that we can be, you know, shipping around in the Caribbean because of the CARICOM trade laws. Yeah, you know what I mean? Ship without taxes, but not ship for free. Yeah, I understand that. I'm not saying it's for free. You know? Um, I, 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 I really think this is exciting times when it comes to... Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's because I see the potential and and because us as a team here at Cabo Ranch, we're actually realizing why we were here. Now we're seeing it. Now we're doing why we came to do good business is because of the milk. You know what I mean? So that's why maybe I'm so excited about it. <clears throat> um, any other questions? Any other input statements, opinions? Let's all let's 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 try to create our own little roadmap right here on iGo Chat. Let's see some different ideas, some out of the box ideas <clears throat> that um, Dr. Young can go bring to her to her to the, the what is it the subcommittee and say, hey, you know what I mean? It was a great conversation that happened on iGo Chat. I think we can look into X Y Z. One and two ideas. Let's let's put it out there, guys. You know what I mean? <clears throat> because hey, who's better to come up with ideas than the people? The people who are everyday consumers, everyday producers. They're the ones with the great ideas. You know, I'm gonna go call, ask some kids soon. Like, what do you think? You know, I'm gonna keep like a little cook something and bring invite some little youths. And, and give them good cheese and burgers and stuff and see if they say anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? If they don't object or don't say, what is this? This don't taste right. Then I'm like, yo, we're on to something. We have to tell them it's good cheese. Um, How much milk do I get from, we get from one animal? It, I don't think we ever actually measure per animal. We just know that 10 goats will give us anywhere from 10 to 11 quarts a day. So we don't really measure per animal. 
I think when it comes to drying off or something, then we'll pay attention to that. But right now, we'll just figure out how much milk we get for the day. And because we know they're not dairy animals, they don't really matter. You know what I mean? And hey, all the people on the on YouTube channel, welcome and thanks for participating. I uh, much appreciated. If you guys are really enjoying this, you know, I tell you, share with your friends and give us some likes and some things. I don't know. I think apparently, if you guys are more, if we're more engaged and let people know that we enjoy what we're talking about, then the algorithm will show more people automatically. That's what my social media guru told me. I don't know how true it is. What is skin manure? I don't know what skin manure is. What is skin manure? Watch out for allergies. Yeah, um, I think, I think, that was, I think that we have to make things clear with packaging. That's the thing a better understanding a lot of this stuff that people you know the labeling and packaging definitely has to be on point two to four liters per day is possible and happening now yeah yeah we don't have like nubians and Alpine or Toggenberg or Sanen to give us a, a massive amount of milk per animal. But um, one day we will. You know what I mean? Um, the question I have, and that, maybe Dr. Young can, can answer this. The milk from which and which, which uh, dairy goat is best, it's the best. Some people say it's Nubia and some people say it's salmon. What say you, Dr. Young, for the buttermilk content and all that stuff? Anybody have any info on that? On which milk, the milk from which dairy goat is regarded as the best? Oh, yeah, we got, yo, Darren, we have a name for a goat poop. What name again, Chini? I haven't started any marketing on it yet. What is it called? Well, you gave Caca. me a Spanish name, hmm? Cabra Caca. <laughs> Type it in there. <laughs> Type it in there. I don't know. What is it? Cabra. Chuli come up. I told, Chuli said we need to come up with a a marketing name for a goat poop. Because I said, yo, I want to sell this, this, this goat poop. I said, but I want a cool name for it. Can you, because she's fluent in Spanish. So I said, can you give me a, the Spanish name for good poop? And she sent me this thing called, you type it in? No. Type it in, man. I think it's pronounced Cabra Caca. Now, my grandmother used to use that word Caca a lot. Now I know where it come from. You know what I mean? Um, let's go back to the, the Dr. Young, the Nubian higher butter fat, sun and highest volume. So I'll leave that whole thing about the processing part and why you need more butter fat. I'll leave that up to Trudy and her experiments. Hmm? Depends on what you're making. Yeah, it depends on what you're making. Trudy said it depends on what you're making. So I'll leave that up to her, but volume for sure. I would love to insert some sand and into this thing. Dr. Young, remember I'm going to say that. Um, going to try is it to make the heavy cream for Rasta pasta and other things. Cool. Carlos, yo, Carlos, we need to talk, bro. We need to talk because I'm all about trying these things and 
getting people to taste them. So this is what I'm talking about, getting people used to this stuff, getting tastemakers to put it out there, getting people to endorse it. That's what I'm talking about. You know? Yeah, Darren, we use a lot of good poop in, in garden beds around here. Uh, a lot of it. I think Trudy just dig up and redo a bed and put some in there today. Um, so, yeah, so the, 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 the poop is cabra good. It's called cabra caca. And I'm going to start figuring a way to create a logo for that and start talking about that a lot more. So if you know anybody who wants some caca, we got enough cabra caca. And I have to find a old woman who use that name, that word all the time, and get her to say it and record it. Yeah. See, obviously, I'm, and we spread it on, on, on pastors too, so I know it's great on pastors. Um, so, yeah. Then we go from goat milk to talking about goat poop. Interesting. That's what I love about I go chatting. We can go anywhere. Anywhere take us at this away. Caca de cabra. Oh, that's, yo. See, that's why I love this I go community, you know. Caca de cabra. We will try both of them. I'm going to try and see. I'm going to post them and put a toll. Like what do you call a poll? And see what people think. Caca de cabra or cabra caca. Man, we're on fire, folks. We're on fire. Like, yo, if y'all have any ideas or any names that you think work for your enterprise, you better drop it now because this group is on fire. We're definitely coming up with some cool ideas and shooting ideas around. You know what I mean? Um, Carlos, the chef is definitely going to be a, a, a asset in this space, you know, you know what I mean? Definitely going to be an asset because we can shoot different ideas off each other and he can try the thing them and tell us how it work and, and, and for sure we'll get real time response from, you know, his patrons or even us, you know what I mean? We could host a little thing and make him be the chef and cook up the thing them. That's what I'm talking about, Carlos. We could do a little thing when them open back outside. When outside open back, we we'll do a little thing. And you can be the man that's just cooking up the thing them. Um, Dallas is saying we use the term caca, but in a different way. I don't know. Watch your caca, watch your ass. Is that what they're saying or watch yourself? Like, it's got to be something to do with ass and them things, but... It's pretty close. Truly, it's all big people here. Like, seriously? We don't have any kids out here that can't hear the word ass. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a good look. I think we should explore those two names. Cabra de Caca, Cabra Caca. We're going to try it and we'll do a poll and see what people like. Um... For sure, I know that how good it is. I know how good the poop is. I know how good it is. You know what I mean? Oh, Shane, big up. Are you late or are you just chiming in? I don't know. Pete. Oh, oh, Shane, sorry, bro. Are you just letting us know that you're here so I don't use any words? Thanks. <laughs> um... Yeah, Renee, Trudy is fluent in Spanish, so she gave me that name. She come up with that. I don't know why she's denying it. And if she's not, then she has some explaining to do. The milk soap should be, I don't know how to pronounce that. Trudy, can you pronounce that? Leche de cabra. Leche de cabra. Mm -hmm. mm. Dallas, are you fluent in Spanish too? Like Trudy? Peter said, Jamaicans say, 
That's what it means. Oh, got it. Yeah, I told you, see, I know my grandmother alone used to say it. Everybody, grandmother used to say them things. The last is fluent in Spanish. So yeah, caca actually have a Jamaican close enough meaning. Yeah, close enough. So it's we. Also poop in French. Huh? It's also poop in French. It's also poop in French. <laughs> yeah, so we're close. We can use it, and it won't seems out of you know. Definitely, I I like it. I like it. I like where we're going with this. You know. We go from milk to talking about goat poop. Can't believe it. Um, uh, what else, folks? Any other, any other um, comments, questions, inputs on developing goat dairy? Milk of the goat soap. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I, I live in Canada, and I I don't speak a lick of French. Bonjour, bonjour, bon, bonjour. Yeah, that's all I know. No, no, she didn't. About the French part, I'm talking about, not the Spanish one. The Yo, guys, that's why I'm laughing. That comment right there is why I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah, any word connect for real. Any word connect. Um, we have to get that. We have to have a good laugh sometimes, not you. Um, uh, any other any other comments? Any other things? Um. Because there's a couple of things that I really want to touch on before I wrap up tonight, right? Okay, Darren, let's talk about your 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 father bank um, nursery. I see you put it in here, so let's talk about it. Um Carbalapu. Linda for the win. Go on, Linda. Linda, you know I'm going to put it in the poll. All right, Darren. Amazing spinner from Good Business. My sale from Mulberry and Lucina by my hair for the year. Okay. All right, so Darren, you want to um, you want to come on, Darren, and talk about this? Give me a, a thumbs up and I'll send you the thing to click on. The link. And you can come and tell people about this. Because not everybody has to be good good farmers, you know. They can be feed farmers, feed supplier. You know what I mean? Oh, wee wee. <laughs> <laughs> These people are killing me. <laughs> yeah, Darren, talk to me, bro. If you want to do this, if you want to come give people a, a, a quick um, thing on your father bag nursery, Lucina and them things, give me a, a, a thumbs up or let me know, and I'll drop the link so you can jump on. You know what I mean? Because I think you've been talking about it. I think it's important that somebody like you, if you have a little nursery going and people can get some seedlings, some suckers from you or whatever, is a father bank up um what they call it silver pastoral create a silver pastoral system for grazing it's great who is Dara she know Linda no she just oh. <laughs> oh all right man's uh not can do that okay so let's uh move on to to some other things. Um, is Mr. Matt Cook around? 
Um, I love it too, Rene. I love the idea of us brainstorming together and coming up with ideas. That's how, that's how we develop a community, you know. Oh, you're in Canada, Rene? Where in Canada are you? I'm not in Canada at the moment, but I am uh, I am from my official residence is uh, um, Brampton, Ontario. So, and Mr. Makuk is in Mississauga. So, you know what I mean? Canada is the best place to be. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to the rest of the people I'm in a foreign but. Scarborough, Skyberia. See? I like to. She says she's a real one. She's a real one. She says Skyberia. Yeah. You need passport to go through. You need um special passport to go through Scarborough. I mean, if it's cool out now, but once upon a time, it hot over there. Um... Darren, let's have a whole different, a whole show on this, right? So you can tell me when your availability is and we can have a conversation about it and maybe bring on a specialist along with us and we can talk about it. You know what I mean? I know Khalil is very versed on it. Khalil, come on enough time. We want somebody else. You know what I mean? Um, okay, so is Peter still here? I'm going to talk about his feed initiative that created some bit of a stir this week. Peter, are you there? If you're not there, no problem. So it seems like Peter and his group is uh, making some headway in in uh, the feed, affordable feed. Okay, Peter is here. I'm gonna send you this link, Peter. And only Peter should click on the link. Huh? Oh, maybe I should I should do that. <laughs> because I have a whole lot, lot of people logging on. Hold on, Peter, let me see if we can send this to you. One second, folks. <clears throat> yeah, Peter, I forwarded to your phone. And we're going to discuss this feed initiative thing because for me, it's important that on my platform, and I go chat, I support positive moves. I support, even if I'm not even a part of it, I support positive move. You know what I mean? And this one, I think, is a positive move. And I'm letting people know that I support it. What are you saying, Mr. Mr. Um, I'm good. I'm good. And you? Yeah. I'll put out my headset okay. and say, you're clear. Okay. I'm going to talk this time. Um, so, I, I wanted to bring you on because I know there was a bit of an upstart. Frederick, hold on. Hold that thought, Frederick, on the hyper thing. Hold that thought. Don't go nowhere with it. Um, I, so, I'd rather bring you on because right off the top, I'll tell people that. Once you brief me on what you're trying to do, I supported it. You know what I mean? I I don't use Nutramix feed at the moment for different reason because I was in development stage of the maintenance ration with Khalil. And I use my farm as a guinea pig for the maintenance ration. And it worked out for us. And I, that's what we use for the most part. So... But I have a great relationship with Dr. Young. I have a great relationship with all of the fit them from Nutramix, like 
I'm not aligned when it comes to our relationship with the industry. Um, I supported your move. I supported your initiative. I think it was a good move. I think it would help farmers. I pointed out my concern to you about whether somebody has store feed or not store feed so that so the farmers can get it. And if we could work, if you could work out that a situation where nobody has to store the feed, the farmers will go pick up the feed. Well, you didn't have to bring that up. They brought it to you, right? That's that correct. They have, a, they have a system in place that all they need was names. That's correct. So please explain to the people now how this works. How okay. the farmers are going to benefit, or any any farmer that's going to benefit from it, how are they going to benefit? Okay. Uh, you summarize it. Um, mm -hmm. Um, the feeding company, it's not, it wasn't going to work on the current platform. So they introduced h &L to us. Uh, so how this will work is that at the beginning of the month, we will tell h &L how many farmers is going to participate based on their usage. Mm -hmm. And all the farmers has to do, just like how they would go by the regular feeding, Go to H and L. We would, I would, I would give them the name of the farm or the farmer. The discount mm -hmm. would be in the system already for that particular farmer, and then purchase them feeding, and then go and they take it to their home. That's it. Simple like that. All we need. Mm -hmm. and any but, farmer, any farmer can be a part of this. Any farmers, uh, goat, sheep, cow, pig. Chicken, boiler. This was done on all farm for all feed. Mm -hmm. And all I need to do is send you or a member of the, the team their name and and their their usage. That is correct. And so long as they are close to the location, the five location, mm -hmm. there they can do it. Now there's one in Clarendon. And um, St. Catherine, mm -hmm. we had one person call me from a, a retail store, said they would love to be on it and supply the farmers in those areas. The only criteria they have is pay for the feeding, minimum of 15 bags, and get this, free delivery. Okay. All right. So let me ask you the, the big question. Will you get note of this? Nothing. Me buy feeding just like them. So, 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 so you just doing this because? Um, I'm a Christian, and I just don't help myself. I help people along the way. So, if I'm getting a deal, I love to pass it on. But you didn't have a deal. You I don't have a deal. deal. And, you and went for a deal. And, and in fact. And in fact, I may not be benefiting from my de from this in St. Mary because we don't have a store located uh, close to it. But in Trelawney, where we just set, set up shop, we mm -hmm. will benefit from this because we can pick it back off in St. Hans. Yeah, I was just going to ask you because I don't have any outlet in St. Mary. I was going to ask you what the cost is going to be for you. Okay, so the sent the center and location. Uh, so um, we already checked it out. Okay. We have a truck. We have a truck that can pick up the feed from the center to our Trelawney location, and mm -hmm. it's uh just like I'm picking up feed in Lidstead right now. Okay, all right. So tell me, one where where you got with numbers across the island with participants? I'll say that again, please, Ray. Where are you with the numbers when it comes to participants across the island? How many people you, you have on, on record that are willing to participate? Our biggest... Based on, uh, our based biggest on the locations and that's uh, accessible to them. Our biggest area is going to be uh, um, St. Hans, Trelawney, and Montego Bay. That's where mm -hmm. the biggest numbers are. Okay? Okay. Yeah. And then... Um, uh, then the other area, we're just going to make the 
the the um, we're gonna make the the feed available to all farmers who signed up, right? You mm -hmm. see, Ray, before all of this came about, we were dealing directly with a feeding company. So uh, there's some logistic has to work out with H and L because now the bulk of the feed is not coming where their store is. So right now we have about 900 bags that can come out of the stores right now mm -hmm. right before we have commitment of 1250 bag if we had gone with the initial plan so we're um so later on uh h l said once we have a certain amount they can deliver in the era like we haven't zeroed it down yet like in manchester st elizabeth that side and mm -hmm. even up to our side in St. Mary, so long as we have the numbers. So what the team and I has decided to work with the stores that is available right now, get it launched, get the farmers having access to this. Okay. <clears throat> I know there is some stir up and dust up over this past week on, on this thing once you guys put it out there that you actually have a deal in principle that's actually factual it is and yeah and i saw i i, I don't know somebody tipped me and said yo you need to go check out what's going on on the different uh groups regarding the feed number one i'll let everybody in here know i wasn't happy with what i saw with the reactions with what i saw because number one this to me, if if I can save at least twenty dollars for the next year or twenty year, um, or two years, I'm happy with it. So any saving is savings, you know what I mean. And if you have to go, for me, if me have to go a high gate, go buy feed, with, uh, and just walk in the store and buy ten bag of feed, and if me have to go Port Mary and go buy the feed and get it for. $20 cheaper, $50 cheaper, then it helps me. And it helps, to me, it helps every farmer if you can get that feed for cheap. If it's not logistically, it doesn't make sense for you because of transportation costs, then just pass on it. That's correct. Or or team up with a man that's in the area and say, yo, can you store me a 10, 15 bag? I'm going to come pick it up X amount of two, every two weeks or whatever it is, I'll make arrangement, whatever you got to do to save on feed costs. Now, what I saw online was disturbing because it looks like people just wanted to tear things down instead of being, instead of looking at it from an objective standpoint and saying, yo, this is going to work for some farmers. This is going to work. It may not work for me because maybe I said Mary or maybe I Portland or wherever, but some farmers out there are going to benefit from this. This is a Correct. Good look. Correct. You know what I mean? And that's, I want to tell people who support us here in this family, in this group here, that look, this is what we're about. Helping people, helping farmers. It's not that's about it. helping ourselves. Correct. You know what I mean? It's about helping farmers. And I put myself behind it, my little two cents behind it, and tell me, Peter, what I think about certain things, because I see that it was, it was bringing value to the sector. It was bringing value to farmers. That's correct. You know what I mean? It, there's a conversation about the Tata store in Mandeville. Everybody know, unless I'm mistaken, enough people know about the Tata store for years. Except for me. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? But my friend used to load up him truck with feed from Tata and bring it come all the way as I, as I get to me. And it's still cheaper than if me did buy it at the store I get. You know what I mean? Mikey used to load up him truck with feed from Tata. Seriously. And carry it come here. I'm a pay, fee, pay him and I'm pay him and pay him for toll and fuel and everything. And it's still cheaper than if they buy it. A high gear, buy it at the feed store. A high gear, so that's how much cheaper Tata is, and a lot of people know about it. But know 
people have put it out and say, yo, that's a cheap food, cheap. Like, yo, where was that? Why don't you tell people long time yeah. ago? Yeah. You know what I mean? I I was under the impression everybody in Mandigo was getting cheap feed from Tata. You know what I mean? I was under the impression that everybody in Mandigo like this of them go buy feed. Because the way I was told about Tata, Tata was a spot. I didn't know it was like only certain people knew about it. But anyways, I just wanted to give you um, uh, some time for talk to the people. Yeah. Um, I appreciate and, that. And, and you know, let them know that this thing is for real. And the it people is. who were in pro close proximity to these outlets will benefit. And if you have the space to help out a man will live further, consider it. You know yes. what I mean? Consider helping them out. You know what I, I mean? Because I can tell you, I would because Mackie did it for me. Yeah. Mackie did it and in their mandevo. I mean, they're still right. here. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it would be a shame that if we don't have to farm and let this die, you got to remember, we the farmer did this, right? Although yeah. I'm in Canada, I am a Jamaica farmer, right? Mm -hmm. Right? I have pigs, I have goat, and I have field. I have five to six people working for me on my farm. On the weekend, only three work. Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday. So my operation is seven, seven, uh, tw uh, 24 7, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would be a shame if we, the farmers, did this and we can't come up with the numbers to support it so we can expand on it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so this is a base. Our goal, once we get in and we show them the volume, right? Then we expect them to be lower to, for the farmers, right? I tell you right now, based on our last survey, the survey, the pricing that I put out and I asked 12 different people from different parishes to look at it, everything came back to me. I said, Mr. McCook, if you can get this a deal, run with it. So I did not hesitate. Right, so instead of talking about price, when I first um, talked to H and L, I talk about what do you need from us to execute this, right? So my fellow farmers, it is not done yet. I need your contact, and I need your numbers, so we can pass it on to them. The rest of this area that there's not an H and L store, we do have a plan. But as TJ, as Lincoln, as Mr. Benjamin said to me, we can't, we can't do the whole island and also Miss Young. So let's start with those five stores. And what we want to do also, you know what it costs to go to Kingston to get medication and different type of uh, things that you need for your farm. So you can tell them at the beginning of the month, I need this. And they'll bring it in, and you and we go from there, right? So it would be a shame if this deal die, and then we we'll go back to same old, same old. We farmers has to start thinking out of the box. My my thing is that who's a producer? We are Reyes. You produce your item, right? If you look at the number, look at the dollar, right? It's not specific. We the farmer get ten dollars, right? The middleman get mm -hmm. an extra $40. The, the guy at the store get $50. All I'm saying, we the farmer has to start thinking different. We can't get $50, right? Because there's marketing, et cetera, et cetera. But all we are saying, we want to get $30. And the middleman, the supermarket can deal with the other $70 to run their business, do their promotion. The gentleman down in uh, Mandeville is doing an excellent job. You know why? I'm of cheap feed in there. And every time you go to that store, you ask yourself, I've never been there, but you come out with something else, right? That's how he draws the people. That's how he get his volume. My fellow farmers, all I'm saying to you, this is a great opportunity. We need the numbers. Peter McCook, 
Lincoln, Mr. Benjamin, is not getting anything else. Nutramix didn't pay me to do this. The reason why I, knew, I use Nutramix is because they have added value to the feed, which I would have to pay a vet service to come do. Ultrasound. All those things I get three times a year. So when I have a vet visit my farm, and looking at 30 animals, I'm looking at 30 to $40,000. When they come do an ultrasound for me, zip, zero. So Ray, you have done a real good job to bring this to light, and I thank you for this. I was not expecting this tonight. All right? No, dude, like, I'll be straight and be honest. It bothered me when I read those things. Oh. I mean, it bothered me because, like, I know the real, and I don't see the negative behind it. So I don't, I, don't, I didn't, I, didn't I, I wasn't expecting people to come at it from that perspective, you know what I mean? And as far as I'm concerned, if I have the opportunity to set the record straight and put some, put people on the record, because you're going to remember you're on the record, you know, so we can pull this up a month later and say, yo, but Mr. Peter, you didn't say this. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah. And I believe that. I believe that you're doing something, you guys are doing something that's positive. If you're saving a man $10, a dollar, $5, $20, $50, you're saving, you're helping them save some money, put some money in their pocket. And, and that's what we're It's positive. You know what I mean? You may not even help everybody across the island, but guess what? You may be helping a 20% in a, in the year, 10% of farmers in the country have access to this. You know what I mean? Five percent. I don't know what it, what the percentage is, but they have access to it. Exactly. And I mean, it was made public. One of the biggest things that bothered me is the the attitude that this was not transparent. This was not <laughs> in the public sphere. That was one of the things that bothered me the most because I know that. This thing, every step of the way, you guys are putting your videos on top of videos, begging people to, to participate. Here on, on this platform, I had you on telling people they can even contact me with their numbers and their information. So this was public every step of the way. Yes. You know what I mean? So that part really bothered me because that was a blatant lie or misinformation or somebody made a calculated decision to put that information out there to create a problem. And we don't need that when we're trying to do some positive things. And you know, you know Ray, to put a spin on that, it did, I felt like I got kicked in the gut. I, I, I no, dude, I know how you feel. I, I know exactly how you feel. Yeah, and I evaluate everything. I could not wait for the next day to come to start checking the price. And you know what? When we checked the price, everything was lower right across the board, all right? So I personally went out and I apologize for any misleading information that was given or anybody who felt betrayed. Whether I'm wrong or not, my feeling is out of it. I want to help the farmers and in return, I will get help. So that is behind me because I want all farmers to benefit from it. But I did share that that night. I'm not, and I'm gonna lie to you, I'm a human being, right? And uh, a few people called me up and said, just keep going, keep going. And that's what motivated me because I took it personally when it was referred that what is the motive behind this? Zero motive. I pay for the feeding just like you if I'm in that area. The only thing I'll get for free, and other farmer will get it for free. We negotiate in it that the farmers get free overall art t-shirts, and that will be part of the package down the road. So yes, I'll get that, and so do you, right? Yeah, so trust me, I felt the same way, and I, I think I felt the same way because I have a background, I know where this is coming from, you know, I was one of the first people that got called on what I think about the initiative. And 
I know it's coming from a good place. You know what I mean? Whether you want to say a man to get a kickback or a man or whatever, but don't say this was not in the public. Don't say nobody knew this was happening because everybody knew it was happening. From my perspective, it was there for everybody. It was shared on like four different, different groups. You know what I mean? It was there all the time, giving update, calling up companies' name all the time. I don't know if they were telling to stop calling up their name. But, <laughs> you, know, <they're> just, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was there, open. You know what I mean? So the whole thing that oh, all of a sudden this come up and they might keep things deals to themselves, whatever, is not true. Thank you. And it is not true. Thank you. You know what I mean? And I'm here on I go chat. If me fight me, I tell Peter in front of my face right now. If me you say there's a next thing behind the scene or whatever, I'm gonna bring it to the table and say, yo, remember this, me now remember this is that go on enough. But I don't know about right at this very moment, all I know is that you can go to I don't know when when is the executed date, Peter? Um we'll know by Monday because I'm mm -hmm. gonna get the, uh, the the information to H&L, and mm -hmm. then once we get it and we work out the starting date, then I'll uh, let you know so you can announce it, and then I'll put a video out. So I want to get it going ASAP, but mm -hmm. I got to follow their protocol. They yeah. require these stuff from us, and then uh, we can talk about execution date. But we do have a deal. We have okay. a deal to get uh, feeding to the farmer at a lower cost, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that most farmers can benefit, and the farmers who do, do not benefit immediately, they will, we figure a way out logistically to get it to them in an area. And Ray, okay. we got mm -hmm. stories jumping on the bandwagon, calling and say, "Hey, I want to be part of this. I'll get the feeding, and they can pick it up from my my store." You know, so, yeah. and I didn't, and I didn't call these stores, right? So yeah, well, a good I, thing is happening. Everybody is gonna, but we might let them look as soon as they might take more than <laughs> they need and and, and hype up the rest. Hype up yeah, the rest. That's, the true. Rest. that's true. That's true. But that's where we're at right now. Okay? Yeah. Um. Okay. So here's okay. Thanks, Peter. Let okay. me talk to. We'll talk soon. All right. All right. Thank you for yeah, bringing man. me on. So no people, problem. please. Go uh, ahead. One second, right? So my mm -hmm. fellow farmers, okay, let's stay strong. Let's stay united. Let's get to Ray. Let's get to Lincoln. Let's get to Mr. Benjamin and myself. We need those numbers. We need those, your information, your name and your numbers and how much you use so we can get this process to the final leg of the game, okay? And the farmers right. that is not participating now, you're not forgotten. We will work on you afterward. Have a blessed one. Thanks, Ray. All right, cool. Okay, Frederick. Um, you, you asked me to hold the thought. High pro. So will this deal ever include high pro feed? Um, I think HNL Agro is a Nutrimix distributor, but you should talk to Khalil. Khalil, are you still here? Khalil, are you still here? If you're here, give me a thumbs up or something. Because <clears throat> I think iPro has a different way of approaching this for their affordable feed. And I think Khalil need to figure out how we can get the word out on what they're doing. Because I think, well, I know for a fact that the maintenance ration was created to be an affordable um, option for farmers with similar results as the goat grower or the whatever it is. You know what I mean? In fact, I think it's better, but that's just my opinion still. Maybe I'm biased because, you know, I had something to do with, to do with um, how it came about. <clears throat> But Khalil is a man to talk to about this because it's his baby. 
No, Colleen, we're gonna send you this. And you can come and talk about this thing. Because everybody needs to deal with them their vested interest. Um Miss Producer. Yes. Are you have it available to send to Kalium? Oh, Kali you say not now, you can't do it. You must say you know, in a position to do that. All right. But anyways, what what I, what I'll do, Frederick, is I'll talk to Khalil because I think Khalil and his team over at Hypro has a different approach or working on a different approach to make sure the maintenance ration is is a, is as advertised in the in the local stores as a cheaper option. I think some stores are hyping, hiking up the price on the maintenance ration, which shouldn't be right. I took offense to it, as some people may say last week, because it's supposed to be an affordable option. And, you know, I don't feel good knowing put me and my business and animals at risk only for final say I'm gonna sell it for the same price as the grower. And all right. You know what I mean? They're not right. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm I was, I was talking to Kelly last week about it right on this show, so he knows and he's trying to figure out what steps they can take to avoid that. And I don't know at the end of the day what the uh the stores will settle on when they when he talks to them on what their their price would be to make it competitive. But the maintenance ration is supposed to be a cheaper option. Right, Kali? You give me a thumbs up on a fire emoji, Kali. Give me a thumbs up on a fire emoji if you agree with me. <clears throat> um, because that was the plan. I know fee prices are going up, but it should always still be the cheaper option. All right, I think we have run a good show tonight. Khalil, say something, bro. Don't leave me hanging. Um, and thank you all for being here. Thank you all for participating. I think the best part of the show really was um, the brainstorming. You know, we, maybe we need to do that more often. You guys agree? As much as we shared some valid, valuable information about the meetings and um, and all of that stuff, but I think the brainstorming and different ideas is the fun part, the part that really got me fired up. And I can tell you guys were enjoying that because of all the participation. Thank you all for doing that. Thank you all for participating. Thanks, Dr. Young. Thanks, Khalil, for you guys always being here, always putting in you know, on a, on a input and an expertise, voicing opinions on things and teaching us how things are done the right way. Thanks to everybody who participate. Everybody, we appreciate it. We love you guys, and we'll be back next week. Um, or it's a great way to get ideas. Yes, it is. As a group, we can come up and you know laugh at one man idea or big it up or you know what I mean, expound on it or whatever it is. You know what I mean, as long as we're moving forward and respectful, respect each other's opinion, it's a good look. You know what I mean, it's a good look and I'm loving it and I appreciate it. And, you know what I mean, I'm going to try to figure out which one of these cockers I'm going to use to sell good too. You know what I mean? So, y'all yeah, yeah, look out for that. I'm going to figure it out, you know. Judy over here laughing at me, but me don't care. Good night, folks, and bless. Have a blessed Sunday, and uh, eat some rice and peas for you. And goat. Um, try don't try goat curry goat tomorrow. Try maybe stew goat or some particular or something. You know what I mean? Try to ex expand the palate on the goat thing and let me know how it go. So you let me know who are gonna try goat in a different way tomorrow. All right, post it. Make you know, tag us. Tag Cabo Ranch if you post it. Your, your Sunday dinner, and it's not curry goat. It's like 
stew goat or grill goat or something. Linda, thanks for joining us there. And uh, everybody, good night. I'm out.